Hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this video series on uh, PR in Netherlands, permanent residence in Netherlands. I have already made a short video about permanent residence, which you can see flashing on the screen, which was just explaining the short requirements that you need to apply for PR and get a PR. But here I have one of my friend uh, with whom I started PhD in Netherlands. So he already received permanent residence in Netherlands few months back. So in this video, we are going to discuss about his experience of applying for the PR, preparing for the PR and uh, what are the challenges he faced during the process. So I will start with the first question, but before that, maybe Lee Chin can introduce himself briefly. So That's that a typical one. <laughs> I'm just a PhD candidate like you. Yeah, I've been here for a few years. That's it. So, okay. Yeah, you can start your questions and then I can. Okay, yeah, yeah. I can answer the yeah your thing. Okay. So, uh, how long have you stayed in Netherlands, and what is your background <coughs> here, like study plus research, whatever you have done in this stay? Yeah. Well, I've been here like almost uh, nine years, I think. And uh, yeah, now I'm a PhD candidate. And before that, but when I just came here, I was a bachelor student and then master student and now PhD. Yeah. Okay. So when did you start the permanent residence application in Netherlands and when did you receive it roughly like uh, what was the duration between the time you applied and the time you received it? Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think it was around uh, probably around November last year, something like that, 2019, November. And then okay. I got it like February 2020. Okay. So like so five months, uh, okay. four months. Yeah. And before the application, you gave all the exams, right? The five exams that you need to give. Oh, of course. Everything uh, were ready before I apply. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we'll go to go into the details of the exams in the following questions. So the next question is what are the major requirements then that <clears throat> one should keep in mind? Uh, before applying for a PR in oh. Netherlands. Okay. Well, there's just a few and they are all important. And <laughs> I mean, you have to hear be more than five years. You need to pass the exam. And Can uh, you like briefly, quickly say the name of the, I mean, the type of the different exams? Like there are five, right? If I'm uh, not. Yeah, basically, yeah, yeah, you can call it six. Because one of them might not be applied to some of the people. <clears throat> but anyway, I just uh, list them out. Uh, I think it's uh, reading, speaking, uh, what? Right. Writing, yeah. And um, history. What? No, 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 no. About reading, the writing. society, right? Nah, there's another one, yeah. But I want to say listening, uh, speaking, uh, reading. And writing. Hey, do I say writing twice? Yeah, so these are like four <laughs> reading, listening, writing, speaking. They are four. Oh, they are four. Yeah, already four. Okay, and then the history. And then the, I think they are called the, the Dutch Society Knowledge, okay. something like that. Yeah. And then the last one actually is called the Knowledge of the Labor what? Market, in, uh, okay. labor, labor Market in the Netherlands. But if you got a job, actually, you can skip that. So that's it, the six. But if you don't have a job, so you need to also do the last one. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, uh, can you tell me something about the integration exams? Like, uh, uh, what is the difficulty level that you faced in maybe like the four exams, the <clears throat> reading, writing, speaking, and listening yeah. level of Dutch? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think you need to have like at least A2. Okay. But actually, yeah, this is an exam, but it doesn't mean you can really speak or read quite well. I mean, you might still have difficult in your daily lives in, in using Dutch, but yeah, but at least you can read some simple Dutch, uh, can understand 
some of the words people speaking. But if you really want to have a pretty good uh, speaking with other Dutch people, that might still be that difficult. Okay. Yeah, maybe it just maybe some other people are better. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. So did you have any specific difficulties when you f- gave those exams? Like, did you fa- pass in the first attempt itself? or I, I, Yeah, I passed all of them for just one time. And uh, yeah, some are actually easier. I mean, if, for, for instance, if you do the reading exam, if you just do all the uh, mock exam online, so you really, you can pass the exam quite easily, actually. So, but for, for writing is the most difficult one because you don't have really, uh, you don't have someone to help you to grade your practice. So you don't have, you only have like one chance or what. So it might be a little bit more difficult. And also speaking, yeah, because you really not that uh, frequent that you really speak that in your daily life. So that's why that all, that's, I think that's the most difficult one for me. Uh, you mean the speaking? Speaking, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. The, I mean, unless you practice with a real native speaker, then you also don't know what level of speaking yeah. you have. Right? Yeah, that's difficult to practice on your daily lives for for speaking. <clears throat> but the when you gave the exam, then you felt like. Was it really A2 or they say A2, but the level is a bit lower than A2, like the real level yeah, of it exam? Be A2. Yeah, I think it's exactly A2. You have to okay. at least uh, confident you have kind of A2 level. Otherwise, it might be a little bit difficult. Okay. And did you f- uh, like take help of any particular website or tutorials or apps for preparing? Uh, for not really. I just, just follow the material from the from the education, how do you say, the duo, I mean the education department from the, from the Netherlands. Oh, uh, duo, D-U-O. Duo. Yeah, duo. Okay. I, uh, deans, and I don't remember, I don't even remember the full name. Anyway, just but duo, the education can department. can search it and put it in the description below, maybe like, we can put the yeah. link later in the description. Yeah, and then you can find all the practice material you, you want for the uh, integration exam. So it was the official uh, yeah, set the official, of... Yeah. Okay. Yeah, true. And it is free for everyone, right? Of course, everyone can go to the website and download it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and you did not follow any particular app, like Duolingo or anything? Not really. That Duolingo, I don't think it's helpful in this case. It's, I mean, maybe Duolingo is more, practice, more practical. You really want to learn the languages, but this one is for exam. So you really need some uh, exam skill, of course. So it would be better to practice on the official material to prepare the exam. So that is the only thing that you followed. You did not have any other uh, YouTube videos or any other source of preparation. No, not really. No. You got an exam, so you need exam skill, not the language skill. No. Okay. Uh, but, <clears throat> and did you feel that your stay in Netherlands for like, because you already stayed in for like seven years when you applied for the exam, right? Like. Oh, almost nine. Nine, okay. So did you feel that that also helped? Like oh, listening? Of course. In yeah. your daily life, you more or less have to use some of them. And, uh, and yeah, and of course, I used to take some Dutch uh, courses, of course, one or two times. So it just built up my foundation of the Dutch. So of course, it's helpful. But if you if your Dutch is not that good, but you really want to pass the exam, of course, you can also do it in two or three months. If you are really uh, participate in some intensive course to, to help you some exam skill or really aim at the exam, that could be also possible. It doesn't have to be in that level for, for so many years. Okay. So how early would you advise anyone who is like, who wants to prepare for the exam? So how early should they start the preparation? Like if they have Good. like zero level of As early as steps. possible, of course. If they really want to stay here, of course, as early as, most, as possible. So you mean like in four months, six months also, anyone can have <clears> that <throat> level to give the exams? Yeah, even two or three months. If you really work hardworking, study every day, even in two months, one month, also up, also possible. 
Okay. Yeah, if you are uh, how in love, yeah. Okay, and you said that apart from this uh, four exams, there is another the society exam. So is that? also you prepare from duo like the <clears throat> knowledge about the dutch society yeah uh, and that exam is it easy or difficult like uh, uh still just require some just remember the stuff it's like common the, sense knowledge right? yeah and some common sense some you know some sense some something you just remember something like okay what should you do if you have a baby in the netherlands something like that okay Yeah, how how can you arrange a child a uh, daycare for for kids? Uh, you know how yeah. to deal with your neighbor. Well, how what to do if you're in danger, something like that. So, like being familiar with the basic rules that you have in Netherlands. Yeah, not really. I mean, just just to uh, help you to understand how the society works in the Netherlands. Or I mean, if you see some criminal, what number you should call? <laughs> something like that. Ah, okay, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Or if you don't have a good time with your neighbor, what should you do? And one Or more question. Uh, okay. okay. Uh, so there is another sixth one you said, right? The labor market. So that is not compulsory for everyone. Yes. It's for instance, it's not uh, it's not applicable applicable for me. I mean, it's not uh, it's not an obligation if okay. you have a job in the Netherlands. So it is only for people who are. Working in an industry or no 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 I mean, if you don't have a job okay so you you need to get the exam for instance if you married to a Dutch so you might be jobless so in that case you need the you need to do the exam but if you have a job then you don't oh, okay so if you don't have a job or if you are not a scientific researcher or like an employment contract then only you give that yeah. uh, work yeah. exam like. yeah. Yeah, it's, it's called label labor market knowledge. So it means to help you to know how to get a job in the Netherlands. That's okay. the idea of that exam. But and all these exams, you need to have passing six, or how do they grade it? Like, oh no, yeah, I think it's six, right? Yeah, just in, like we uh, have in the university. Six out of ten. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. And uh, do you remember the order of how you took these five <clears> exams? <throat> Oh, not really, but you can actually you can check check whatever you want. I mean, because they're all separated. I mean, I can do writing tomorrow and then do reading two months later, do do speaking or in another two months later, or you can do all of them in in one or two days. They're all possible. It just depends on the if there any available place to do the exam. So the specific order you take doesn't. Help you a lot, like uh... not really. I I don't do it really. I I know of course I just I remember why I take this order. Uh, I don't remember the order, but I think I my first one is the reading uh, because okay. I thought it is the easiest one, and then uh, and then the order as I don't remember. I remember the last one is I think speaking is the last one because. I thought it was the most difficult one. Yeah, that's it. Okay. That's, yeah, but depends. Really depends on you. Uh mm huh. -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it is better just to know what you followed, and then people can decide what works for them. Uh, yeah. True. <clears throat> I mean, just uh, you can think by yourself to see what is your strong side, what is your weak side, or what order you prefer. But it really doesn't matter. Okay. Uh, okay. So, how long? Uh, I mean, is there a gap? Like, suppose one doesn't pass the exam and he wants to give the exam again because he did not pass. So, is there like a time frame that you cannot give the exam immediately after a week or after two weeks? No, uh, not really. As long as there is available places, you can apply to do any exam at any time. Okay, but of course, if you keep failing or worse, I think there are some, some, uh, some conditions saying that if you fail too much, you can apply for the how um, how to call it. You can just uh, skip the exams if you can prove that I tried too hard, I tried so many times, but still I I couldn't pass it. And ah, in okay. that case, you can 
Uh, uh, the exams, and, yeah, you can get exams after the exam. And you pay every time you give an exam, right? Yeah, For each course. exam. And how <laughs> much is the fee? Like when you applied in November, in, I mean in uh, 2019. It varies uh, based on the uh, exams. I mean, for reading, it's cheaper. I think it's like 30 or 40 euro. I don't remember. Okay. But for writing or speaking, it costs more. I think it's 70 or 80 euro. Because okay. those exams, you need people to look at your thing. Ah, okay. But for, for, for reading, they're all multi choice, uh, multiple choice courses. So you don't need people to review your answers. So. And roughly, how much was it in total <clears throat> you paid for the, all the exams? Uh, around 200 probably okay yeah i mean obviously you will check it in the website because it changes every year but yeah, yeah, yeah. i'm just saying but, like it's... yeah of course 200 or something okay that's what you expect yeah. and uh, okay so what are the major i mean you already said it but maybe you can summarize it like what are the major challenges that you faced during the exam or maybe during the whole application process did you have any specific like one two three or major challenges <clears throat> challenging i don't know <laughs> you mean uh, you're talking about the exam or what? yeah i mean you can talk about anything like the day you started giving the exam till the date you got the pr in your hand do you have any specific problem or challenges or... <laughs> i mean as long as you pass the exam i think it's fine I mean, okay. for all for all those uh, condition that you are you are you will be applicable, uh, you will be mm, sufficient enough to to apply for this this PR thing. I think the most difficult one is to get a job. Mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I forgot <clears throat> to ask that. So, yeah. is it true that you should have minimum some pending job contract, like one year or something? Yeah, like that? yeah, true. At the time you apply for that. Uh, for the PR, you should uh, you should have a contract which is at least one year long. Okay. Otherwise, your uh, like... it's not, uh, you didn't meet that condition. So it's the day you apply with everything. Uh, I think so. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah. So once you get the PR, how long it, it is valid? like the permanent resident, the residence card? Oh, yeah, for every five years, you need to renew it. And are there any specific conditions? Like suppose you have a PR, you cannot move out of Netherlands for this many months? Or... I think so, but it's not, I'm not sure if you can find it in the website, but I, I heard that uh, you cannot leave the Netherlands for more than you know two years or three years, I'm not sure. But anyway, okay. you can leave. You cannot like get the PR and then just move to another country for another five years. That's of course not possible. But you can go for a few months in a year. Well, for for vacation, that's normal. It should be logical. I mean, if you just completely get another job or in another country or what, that of course not not okay. You should at least prove that you still consider the Netherlands as your living place. Okay. Uh, okay, so before we go to the WhatsApp question, let me ask this question which we have. Uh, I already explained that in the PR video, but still Lee Chin is going to tell you uh, in one line. So the difference between permanent residence in Netherlands and permanent <coughs> residence in Europe. I'm sure not that. Uh, I mean, I'm not that. Uh, I mean, I, I I don't I don't know the difference really. So I only know one thing, which I always say. I also got it from you and also from the IND website. So yeah. like your education years when you are applying for PR in Europe is counted as half. Yeah. Uh, when you are applying for PR in Europe, but uh, yeah. For... Well, yeah, that's just the condition to apply the permit. Yeah. I mean, after you get it. I don't know the big difference between okay, them. I mean, okay, okay, okay. What's the difference between having a okay a PR in Netherlands and a, and the PR in Europe? I I'm not quite sure what's the biggest difference. Okay. But I think you can check the website or ask some people from IND. That would be better. But yeah, I'm quite sure. Yeah. Okay. Then let me go quickly to his WhatsApp question, and then we can end it. 
uh yeah so i think i already covered this but still he asks something any specific things that you should keep in mind regarding the documents that you submit during the application so he i think that is mainly income related documents that's what he thinks because one of my friend has already passed the exams he is going to apply for with the application mm -hmm. so he asks like do you need to keep in mind any specific documents that you submit during the application or it is only income related documents uh, well just follow the, the the rules in the website i mean they may ask you for the proof that you have a work in the netherlands so you need to have a contract ready or your salary slips ready that is the income yeah the income yeah something like that and you of course you need to have your certificate ready and then yeah i think that's it uh that's the most those are the most important thing okay one more question he asks uh what happens to the current highly skilled migrant once you get the pr does it get cancel or do your salary requirements change for the employer so what happens when a hsm like highly skilled migrant gets a pr i don't see the difference i mean <laughs> my life doesn't change a single thing <laughs> after i okay. get the pr so i mean for for get uh, getting Getting a PR means that you don't need to worry about uh, staying in the Netherlands. That's it. Even though you don't have a job anymore, you can still stay here. Unlike, uh, yeah, unlike uh, other visa. I think that's the only. So the highly skilled migrant visa or residence permit doesn't get cancelled. So it's just a new type of residence that you get after PR, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, you're talking about that. Yeah, just a renew. So your old one will be. I won't say cancel. It's just replaced by the new one. Replaced by the new one. Okay, and yeah. you don't need to worry also like how much uh, time you are going to stay in Netherlands. No, as long as you are staying in the Netherlands, that's fine. So the salary requirements also don't change. I mean, obviously in your PhD it's the same, right? Uh, you mean the salary requirement to, to for what? the employer? Like if you. Uh, obtain a pr in the middle of your job as a hsm then yeah. does the salary requirement for the employer change uh, okay i mean but it's like this as long as you get a pr you don't you don't have to rely on your employer to get a visa for you because yeah you're here legally forever okay. so you can stay in the netherlands wherever you want i mean of course legally don't break mm -hmm. the rule <laughs> for the others, you can do whatever you want. You can even jobless. You can just stay at home doing nothing, or you can go to do any job you want. You can go to work at this is do a do a PhD, or you can go back to school. So just do whatever thing you want. You don't have to worry about that. Oh, uh, someday I might be kicked out uh, from the country. There, yeah, that's it. So, do you get any extra privilege as compared to what Dutch people get when you get a PR? Apart I from the job, do you have any other additional privilege or benefits? I don't know. Maybe I think it's the same, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I, don't, I don't go really deep in in that area. I mean, I think okay. you can have the similar right like uh, people with a passport. I'm not sure. I think so. Yeah. For example, you lose the job after you get the PR. Uh, yeah. After like one year or half year or something, you lose the job, but you are legal in Netherlands because you have PR for four more years or something like that. Yeah. Then do they have a condition like you should have job or like no, you should not be not. jobless for six months? No, no, no. Will cancel your no, PR? No, 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 no. Okay. Because your PR, you are like living here forever. The only condition that. Okay. The only condition that you. You just stay in it. It's fine. You can so you don't can move be out for a long period outside yeah. of nothing, like yeah, one year, two year, or something. Yeah, that's fine already. And I do mean, you also even, get the jobless benefits? Like yeah, Dutch you can get, get that. Yeah, it's the same like a normal Dutch people, I think. Okay, so that is one additional benefit you can say, right? Like 
Yeah, even though you break the rule, even you kill someone, you you go to jail in the Netherlands. They won't kick you out or what? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Exceptional circumstances. Yeah, I mean, just the guy yourself as a normal people in the Netherlands. So, I mean, if you are, so for instance, if you stay in India, you 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 will not worry about that Indian government will kick you out, right? So I think it's the same same situation here. Okay. Okay, uh, so finally, any final advice or tips you want to give to people who want to apply for permanent residence in Netherlands in the future? I don't know <laughs> tips and advice. Just do your exam as, as early as possible. I don't know. So I, I guess I mean, from the interview also, the exam is the most important thing, right? Once you really, once you have the idea or preference that want to stay here, just then that's the day you need to start to prepare the exam, I think. So, yeah, just do it. I mean, <clears throat> even though you don't have a job yet, even, even though you're still a student, but you can still do the uh, exam. Yeah. Why not just do it now? And yeah, that's it. So even though you don't have that five-year period, still you can always finish yeah, the exams? You and... plan to, yeah, if you plan to stay here, then just do it. Of course, okay. not too early enough. I think the... Uh, the valid duration, I think it's like two or three years, I'm not sure. For the exams? Yeah, maybe there's no. Yeah, you need to check the website, I don't remember actually. Yeah, yeah, I will leave the details in the description yeah. of the IND, IND, right? Like IND. But that one is two, IND, I don't oh, know. Okay, okay. Either two or IND. Okay, you will send me later, I'll put it in the description. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay, yeah, yeah thank you very much, Li Chen, for giving your time on a Sunday for uh giving our valuable time for this interview uh, if you like this video then don't forget to smash the like button uh, share this video with all your friends because many people are curious to know about pr in netherlands like who are coming to netherlands or who are already in netherlands and don't forget to smash the subscribe button so that you keep getting all the future updates until next video goodbye from valkenburg netherlands goodbye.